Specifically, it has to do with the fact that I am using fixed lenses and not automatic lenses. So in front of me, I have seven artisans and there are three lenses over here. This is the 35 millimeter T1.05. This is the two point. Uh, this is the 25 millimeter f 1.8, and this is the. Oh my God! I gotta see. I even forgot what I have. Uh, this is the 12 millimeter f 2.8. So, 35 millimeter, 25 millimeter, and of course this is the 12 millimeter. Okay. Now, when I uh, oh, I, I and I must add that I am using a Black Magic 4K, which is a Micro Four Three. So those of you who know what a Micro Four Three is, the sensor is kind of small. It has a two times uh, or 1.6 times or something like that crop factor. That basically means that when you're shooting a full frame camera, you uh, when you're shooting a full frame camera, the the picture is much more wider because the sensor is much more wider. And then the next one in is the ASPC lens, um, um, ASPC uh, sensor, which is a little bit more smaller. And then you have the Micro Four Three, which is much smaller than that. Okay, I mean that's just kind of like how it goes, and I'm no expert, so please, you know, this video is just me making a video telling you my story, so that way people who are like me, uh, trying to get into this kind of you know gear uh, at least you know what my experience was so that way you know what to look for that's the idea that you go into a shop and you'll be like well i think i know what i'm looking for because when i went into a shop i did not know what i was looking for okay so here's my story once upon a time once upon, <laughs> we're not doing once upon a time so when i went looking for a camera uh, of course i was looking at the fx3 the fx30 I was looking at the Sony lines and, and, and you know all that stuff, but I'm a very sentimental person. I want to go with the company that was basically that I loved, uh, I still love, and I am I'm very loyal to, or at least I have become very loyal. And I think that's the idea with the company. That, and I'm talking about Black Magic uh, Company because I like their products, I like everything that they're doing, I like the fact that. They are, they, you know, they are really into cinema and they are professionals and they're not looking for anything else except for cinema people and stuff like that. So I like that idea, their thinking, their philosophy. I was having this conversation with a friend of mine and, and, and you know, we were just chatting away and he was like asking me like, hey, listen, if Apple was going to go into photography, like go into cameras, like proper cameras and not, not the iPhone style cameras, like a proper camera, what do you think? I said, you know what? I'm sure this discussion is going on in Apple right now where they're saying we like what Blackmagic is doing. So if we ever want to go out there and try to buy a company or try to associate ourselves with any company in a big way, it would be Blackmagic. It will not be Sony. It will not be Nikon. It will not be even Leica for that matter. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that these are bad, com uh, bad companies. I've been using Sony all my life and Sony is a fantastic brand and I was really leaning into the Sony. But... I was more like, I need to go with the one who brought me to the dance. I need to go with the one who brought me to the dance. And it was black magic. And Da Vinci Resolve was the one that saved me. So when I went to the shop, I told myself I went with black magic just because I like their products. I do like the results of the camera. Um, please don't look at my videos and think that is the result of the camera. That is probably my fault because at this point I'm still learning it and it's only been a couple of months since I've, I've got myself the Blackmagic camera. Now this is Micro Four Three. Uh, I couldn't exactly afford the 6K, so this is the 4K, which is perfectly fine. This is such a beautiful camera. I mean, it does so much. I'm not even sure what the 6K is going to do because if this thing is going to do so much, the 6K would be like, like what? make pastries i have no idea <laughs> so when i went to the shop and that was the camera i was going to buy which is the body but i wasn't sure what lens to buy and of course the salesperson brought me this lens which was like 16 i don't know it was a tamron i'm not sure which brand it was and i was like girl i'm paying 1600 dollars for a lens you, you you know what and at that time i already did a little research so i had this seven artisans i knew this name and they make excellent cinema lenses, I was told. So I said, show me, show me that. And that's what she did. She showed it to me. So the first lens I got was the 35 millimeter, right here, Vision uh, Series, T1.05. Fantastic lens, fantastic. I am telling you, 
wow, this is like me having a conversation with Roger Deakin, something like that. That's what I felt like, like, you know, me hanging out with the big boys. This is such a great lens. Only thing was, this thing is heavy. It is heavy. When you put it on with your camera, you know, there's a reason why camera operators are paid a lot of money is because they are skillful people. If you get the shot wrong, everything else is useless from there, right? So I got this lens. The morning I bought the camera and then the evening I went to a fashion show. So I had no experience whatsoever. And the fact that this lens and this camera that I could shoot some decent footage that was worthwhile, uh, I was very impressed. I, I was very impressed with myself that the fact that, wow, that is your starting point with a 4K camera and this lens and you can actually shoot that, that was fantastic. But there was a problem. There was a problem. See, when you're shooting fashion uh, show, or fashion runway, you must understand that um, there's a certain distance that you need between you and a moving model, a fashion model. And the model is moving and because this is not automatic focusing, I am rack focusing, right? Like I'm focusing as the model is moving away from me and I'm trying to focus when the model is coming towards me, trying to get the best footage, which I totally failed. I have no, no problem saying it on, ta on camera. I failed that night because a lot of footage was really bad. A lot of footage was very good, but that was because I was lucky or the camera did its job. I was just lucky, but the rest of it was totally useless. I could not mix a lot of stuff. And, but this lens was fantastic. There were two problems with that. One, of course, I had no experience, obviously. It's the first time I'm using a camera with no automation at all. I have to do it by hand. I had no idea what I was doing. Of course not. All I was telling myself, just stay in focus. Can you stay in focus? Can you stay in focus? And that's what I was doing, trying to stay in focus. But this lens was fantastic and the camera was fantastic. And I had no tripod. I was simply standing there with all the other photographers and I'm trying to get the shot. I did some shooting, which was fine. And some of it was just absolutely nonsense anyway. But I didn't like the framing because I was very limited. Because remember, when you put a big lens like this into a 4.3, you already know that the 4.3 is going to crop in two times, which is like instead of getting this nice big shot, it's cutting in like that. So instead of me looking at the models and the clothes, I'm looking at her face because I was so close to, you know, like, like I was so close to it. And I was like, oh my God, oh, this is going to be terrible. What, what kind of editing am I going to do out of this? Thank God I was not paid for that gig. Like I went because I was invited. I was not paid. If I was paid, I would have been fired immediately because everything was totally useless. But it was a great learning lesson. And now I was telling myself, Okay, now I know what 35 millimeter means at that distance. I know what it means. So I said, let me go get myself another lens, which is what I did. So I went and got myself the 25 millimeter thinking 35, now 25, I should be fine. And you know what? It still was not giving me the framing because I wanted that framing where I could see my subject, but I could also see a lot what was going on around. I didn't want something that looked like a portrait. You know what I mean? Like, like to my face. I wanted, like, like if you're looking at this video right now, you see me and you can see there's something going on in the back. I mean, you can see where I am because this camera is shooting wide. I wanted that experience over here because I wanted to have that option, you know, in post-production, like when you lay it out on your editing uh, software, you can zoom in a little bit and you can recrop and resize things a little bit. I wanted to have that option. So I went from 35 millimeters to 25 millimeters. Again, seven artisans, fantastic lens, beautiful. The bokeh on this was so cool. The out of focusing, the rack focusing, everything was, it's just so, so cool. F1.8, fantastic. But I was not getting the framing that I wanted. I had to like position myself like, like in Cleveland, like, you know, I have to go all the way to Cleveland to position myself. Like I have to stand at least 10 feet far away. I know what you're saying. So pick up the camera and move 10 feet back. What's the problem? But here's the thing. And this is experience. I had no experience, but here's the thing. Holding this camera with a heavy lens, 20 meters behind, and you try to hold it steady to get a shot, it's not happening. I, I can tell you right now, it's not happening. This is not as easy as what you think. Even, 
see, I have blood pumping in my veins. So I'm trying to hold this like, I'm trying to hold it like, because I knew what was going to happen in post-production. And I'm holding it as steady as I can. I was like, oh man, this is crazy. I looked at the footage on my screen. I was, you know what? I was about to go into therapy. I was thinking, oh my God, I shot all this stuff and I can't use any. Because I was like, you know, it was as if I was doing this with the camera. I'm not doing that. I'm holding it really still. But if you're at that distance, shooting a far distance, any micro movement you make over here shows up on the screen big time. And I was like, oh man, this is just terrible. I cannot shoot from far away. I have to be closer to my subject. So... Went back to the shop, the same shop, by the way. Picked up the 12 millimeter from 35 millimeter to 12 millimeter inside 45 days, 45 days from here to here. And guess what? That's the lens that worked. I didn't have to be far away. I could put it on my camera. I could get a nice wide angle. I could be closer to my subject and still get a beautiful wide angle. And that's the lens. I have it right here. This is the 12 millimeter. Beautiful. It looks a little bit like a fish eye, but it's not a fish eye because I saw the fish eye one too. I probably might buy the fish eye next one. Maybe. My birthday is coming up, by the way. It has like a bulb, the, the glass, and it really shoots very, very nicely. I'm not saying that this is not good. This is not good. I'm just saying that this is the one that I should have bought from day one. Right now, I am nailing my rack focusing like... Oh boy, you're, you, you, if you see what I'm doing, you're probably thinking, oh, this guy's been doing this for quite a while. No, 60 days. As of this video, I'm making 60 days and I can actually do it. I, I went to another shop and got this rubber ring, which is put on the, because this lens, what happens is the aperture ring, which is the exposure part, and the focusing ring are very close to each other so that when you're shooting and when you're using your hand, it's very easy by mistake for you to be rotating the wrong ring. So what I did was I got this little rubber thing that you can buy in any Photoshop, by the way, and you put it around the focusing ring. So when I'm shooting and looking at my screen, I don't have to pay attention to the front what's going on. All I have to do is simply move the rubber ring and I'll be perfectly fine. 